This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. We're now going to go through and look at derivatives. It's a complicated aspect of financial instruments, but we literally just touch the surface. Okay, we don't go into it in any great detail. Uh, so what we need to do is be able to understand what a derivative is. And then once we've understood what a derivative is, we can then go through and think about the accounting treatments. Uh, so let's have a look first of all about the, the definition of what a derivative is. Uh, and it has to have all three of the following characteristics. Uh, so what you've got there, first of all, is that the value changes in response to a change in specified interest exchange rates. Uh, or in response to a change in price, rating index, or other variable. What's that on about? Uh, well, the key bit is that the value changes. So it's usually traded. Uh, so what you have there is maybe you've entered into a, a forward contract, which is an agreement to buy a fixed amount of a commodity at a fixed point in future. So maybe you're an, an orange juice manufacturer and you manufacture orange juice from oranges. So you want to go through and agree to buy a fixed amount of oranges at a particular point in time. So maybe just before the summer, because that's when everybody gets hot and drinks orange juice. So that's when you need to make lots and lots of orange juice. So you need to buy lots and lots of oranges. And let's just say it's not the beginning of summer just yet. It's the beginning of January, isn't it? So we've got right the way from the beginning of January to wait until sometime in June or July when we buy the oranges, pulp them up and then make the orange juice and sell. OK, uh, now what's going to happen there is that I could enter into a forward contract that agrees to buy a fixed amount of the oranges at a fixed price. So I know how much I am going to pay. But there's weather, isn't there? And there could be good weather, there could be bad weather. And what could happen is I know how much I am going to pay on that date for those oranges. But depending upon whether the weather's good, whether the weather's bad, the price may go up or down. OK, so if the weather's good, maybe there's an abundance of oranges OK, that have come to market. So therefore, because there's quite a lot that the price goes down. Uh, so therefore, the value of my contract will change because I've agreed to buy it at a fixed price, but maybe on the open market, I could buy it for a little bit less. Okay, but I've committed to this contract, so I have to enter into it, it's tough. Maybe the weather's been quite bad, okay, uh, and therefore there's not so many oranges out on the market. If that's the case, the price of oranges goes up, and I'm jumping for joy, because I've agreed to buy my oranges at a price which is a lot lower than what the actual market price is of those oranges when I come to buy the oranges. OK, so you're, you're trying to cover yourself for the risk. OK, you're, you're, you're removing the, 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 the valuation, uh, the, the, the changes in the value. Uh, but what we're concentrating on now is the fact that that derivative, that forward contract that we have, its value will change depending upon the change in price of oranges okay sounds crazy if you think it's crazy watch trade in places okay uh, then also for it to be a derivative it requires no initial net investment uh, it doesn't necessarily have to cost nothing to enter into it there might be a very small payment but as long as it is small as a payment in relation to the overall value of the contract here a forward contract you could enter into it without any payment whatsoever and the also the other important bit is that it is settled at some point in the future so when i enter into my contract forward on oranges you know i enter into it today at january and i settle it in may june or july at some point in the future okay excellent uh, happy with those three yeah but we're not going to go anything further than a forward contract at this level, uh, but futures, options, swaps, at later levels, they are other examples of derivatives. Keep them to one side, shall we? Forward contract. A contract to buy an agreed amount at a set rate at a set date. Okay. 
Uh, the accounting treatments all depends upon that derivative. Uh, will it be an asset? Will it be a liability? Uh, well, it will be an asset if it is favourable. So if with your contract, the price that you have is better than the price on the market, then you will have a derivative financial asset. Okay. However, it will be a liability if it's unfavourable. So if the price that you've agreed to pay on the contract is more than that open market price. So when we're going to go through there and try and value it in terms of its fair value, we're always going to have to compare the price that we have with compared to the price that we have without the contract. And that will then help us think about whether it's favourable or unfavourable. OK, uh, we then go through measure it at fair value initially and subsequently. And way back on classification, we said that derivatives are held for trading. So therefore, any gains or losses go immediately there through profit or loss. OK, so quite a bit to consider. Uh, let's go through work the example and see how we get on. OK, again, I don't think any questions will get any more difficult than what you see within this example. OK. So it wants us to explain how the contract should be accounted for by Harry in its financial statement. So statement of profit or loss, statement of financial position for the year ended. Is it December 20x5? OK. Uh, so it says that Harry entered into a forward contract on the 1st of November x5. Uh, so within the financial year at nil cost. So at goes through there and if you like satisfies one criteria that there is no initial net investment uh, to purchase a hundred thousand units of tin at one hundred dollars per unit on the first of february 20x6 so the contract will be settled at some point in the future okay uh, will the value of that forward contract change yes it will you know, we've agreed to buy 100,000 units. Is it there at $100? So it is going to go through there and cost me, is it, I think, $10 million, isn't it? That's the amount that I will pay at some point in the future. However, the price of tin will change. Okay, it will go up, it will go down. And depending upon whether it goes up or down will depend upon whether my contract has benefit and is therefore favourable. And a financial asset or whether the price goes against us and therefore it's an unfavorable contract and therefore a liability okay so as there is a price that can fluctuate the value of the contract will vary so we have the potential for changes in price of the contract nil cost settled at some point in the future okay excellent so we've explained that it is a derivative we therefore measure it initially at fair value. Well, initially, it costs zero, doesn't it? Okay, pay nothing. So initially, we show nothing within the financial statements. We would make a disclosure under IFRS 7, but that's not within financial instruments at this level. Okay, so initially, it costs zero. However, we then need to fair value it at the reporting date, and any gains or losses go to profit or loss, don't they? So at the end of the year, we have 100,000 units of tin that we're going to buy. But the actual rate, the market rate is there now as $104 per unit. So I'm quite happy, aren't I, if you think about it? I've got a contract that says you can buy it at 100. But the market now says that at the reporting date, it will cost you $104. So if you tap that into your calculator... Is that there is $10.4 million. Okay. So what you've got is that if you look at your contract, so with the contract, you would pay, is it 10 million? Without the contract, you 
will pay, is it 10.4 million, isn't it? Okay. So is it more beneficial to have the contract or to not have the contract? Yeah, I, th I think it's cheaper, isn't it, uh, with the contract? So therefore, it is cheaper, isn't it, with the contract? So this contract has some value, doesn't it? It's better okay, to have the contract than to not have the contract. So the difference that we have is 0.4 million, isn't it? And I would say that that is a favourable contract, isn't it? Because it is cheaper to pay for the goods with the contract than it is without the contract. Okay. So if that's the case, if it's a favourable contract, then you have a financial asset. And initially it cost us zero, didn't it? So if that's the case, we need to go through that and debit my financial asset with my favourable forward contract at 0.4 million. And the credit is there to the statement of profit or loss which is there as a gain isn't it okay that's it okay i don't think it would push it any further than that whatsoever so you have a financial asset of 0.4 million on the sfp you have a gain through profit or loss of 0.4 million uh, so therefore you've gone through and treated the financial asset initially you treated it subsequently at the end of the year. So that's everything that you need to do. Uh, just be careful if it was to then move on for, for another accounting period. Uh, maybe there will be an additional change. So maybe the financial asset increased from 0 0.4 up to 0 0.7 million. Then you would have a gain from 0 0.4 to 0 0.7, which is 0 0.3, isn't it? So you'd have a gain of 0 0.3, but the asset be shown at 0.7 uh, remember you're looking at the movement that goes to profit or loss the SFP shows the figure at that point in time so, so just be aware of that in case it was to crop up in any particular question but going forward I think you're best making sure you know what a derivative is how to measure the derivative and then being able to play briefly with the numbers other than that that's it for financial instruments so I shall see you all in the next chapter